Kukuju. Eshi. Kukuju. Eshi. Thank you so much for inviting me here today. Honorable Ministers of State present, MPs present, Chief Executives and Heads of State Institutions. Uh, members of the national leadership of the MPP, past and present executives of MPP USA, national chairman of MPP USA, members of the National Council of MPP, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, delegates present, members of the media. Having me to start by conveying Special greetings from His Excellency President Anabu Dankwe Kukwadi and Vice President, my dear husband. I'm also very honored and privileged for the invitation to address the Kukudu family on such a special occasion. Mr. Chairman, some six years ago, after the declaration of results for the 2012 presidential and parliamentary elections, the new patriotic party felt cheated and shortchanged. Despite this, we demonstrated our long-standing commitment to upholding the tenets of democracy and the rule of law, led by our law-abiding candidate, Nanado Dankwe Kufuado. We elected to take the path of rule of law to register our grievances and seek justice at the court. We chose due process. After proceedings that lasted about eight months, the Supreme Court <coughs> curiously rejected our petition and declared John Dramani Mahama the winner of the 2012 elections. As the case progressed with the details of what went on during the elections, many worried about the stability of our nation. Some predicted doom and held the opinion that when the evidence adduced and arguments advanced, the MPP should not accept any verdict other than victory. However, our leader, Nana Dudankwe Kufuado, accepted and respected the decision of the court, although we all didn't agree with it. Post-2013, with high hopes and belief in the Almighty God, we christened our campaign, The Battle is the Lord's. Inspired by this, we marshaled all efforts and fought relentless, relentlessly with the United Front in the 2016 election campaign. By the grace of Allah, we recorded a historic victory. <coughs> Today, we have His Excellency, President Anay Dudankwe Kufuado, as President of the Republic. <laughs> The battle was truly the Lord's and continues to be the Lord's. Mr. Chairman, we cannot celebrate the 2016 victory of the New Patriotic Party without acknowledging the foreign branches of our party, particularly NPP USA. Your enormous contribution to the campaign in kind and in cash as well as your physical presence, the physical presence of those of you who were able to come to Ghana for months to help chart the course of success is deeply appreciated. Your expertise was invaluable and greatly appreciated. I would like to add that our success at the polls could also not have been possible without the active participation and support of our youth. And I'd like to salute our commander, Samuel Ufu, for his gallant effort. We owe the Ghanaian youth a great deal of gratitude for their courage and commitment towards the momentous victory in 2016. Fellow Kukudai, we are just over a year in office, but the state of our nation has seen positive changes. We thank Almighty God for delivering our country and economy from the pain of economic mismanagement and gross incompetence. When the MPP assumed office in January 2017, the government was faced with important strategic choices to either maintain the status quo, manage the inherited system better, or embark on a strategic shift to a new era. President Ekufuado decided on a strategic shift, and I quote him, 
We want to build a Ghana which looks to use its own resources and their proper management as a way to engineer social, economic, and economic growth in our country. We want to build an economy that looks past commodities to position our country in the global marketplace." End quote. We've ended the first year in office under the visionary leadership of our president. By all accounts, this is a remarkable first year for any government in the Fourth Republic especially. I proudly say this because we indeed have a positive story to tell. The government of Nana Dodonkwe Kufuado, our president, is a government which delivers on its promises. Please bear with me as I go through a very long list of promises delivered and the achievements so far. So we promise to implement free SHS, and we have delivered on our budget program. We promise to restore nursing training allowances we have delivered. We promise to issue national ID cards we are delivering. We promise a national digital address system we have delivered. We promise to establish a ministry of Zongo and inner city affairs, and we have delivered. We promise to establish a Zongo development fund, and we are delivering on that. We promise to establish three development authorities, Northern, Middle Belt, and Coastal, as vehicles for the allocation of $1 million per constituency, and we are delivering. We promise to stay current on all statutory obligations, like the NHIS, District Assembly Common Fund, GET Fund, SNIT, and we have delivered. We promise to restore teacher training allowance, and we have delivered. We promise to revive the collapsed railway sector, and we are delivering on that. We promise to end doom so, and we have delivered. Oh. Yeah. We promise to restore economic growth, and we have delivered. We promise to reduce rapid rate of borrowing and accumulation of public debt, and we have delivered. We promise to reduce inflation, and we have delivered. We promise to reduce interest rates, and we have delivered. We promise to improve Ghana's sovereign credit rating, and we have delivered. We promise to enhance fiscal discipline in, our, in the management of our economy, and we have delivered. We promise to reduce taxes, and we have delivered. We promise to increase the share of the District Assembly Common Fund to, with, to persons with disabilities from 2% to 3%, and we have delivered. We promise planting for food and jobs, and we have delivered. We promise a stimulus package to support local industry, and we have delivered. We promise to implement a national entrepreneurship and innovation plan, and we have delivered. We promise one district, one factory, we are delivering. This year, about 100 factories are going to start working. We promise a more efficient port system, and we have delivered. We promise to pass a law to establish Office of the Special Prosecutor, we have delivered. We promise to implement a strategy to curb the menace of Galamsi, and we are delivering. We promise to increase and pay peacekeeping allowances from $31 to $35, and we have delivered. We promise to digitize driver's license and vehicle registration, and we have delivered. We promise to increase the standing of Ghana in the eyes of the world and President Manu Delta Kufuado. We promise to fix the economy and with the competent economic management led by His Excellency Vice President Baumia. Yeah. Today, the World Bank has named Ghana as the fastest growing economy in Africa. Ladies and gentlemen, has this ever happened in the history of No! no. This is the first year of Nana Dudanko Kufuado's administration. This is only the first year. I must say, this is a powerful first year. Last year, President Kufuado said he was in a hurry. This year, which is our second year, he says he's moving into second year with supersonic speed. The supersonic bus will be carrying the following. Infrastructure for Poverty Eradication Program will allocate $1 million to each constituency. The Nation Builders Corps will employ 100,000 graduates across the country. Railway projects from Accra, Kumasi to Paga will commence. National ID cards will be issued. Zongo Development Fund will start disbursing. <coughs> one district, one factory will launch many factories. Digitization of the land registry is on course. Phase two for planting for food and jobs will be rolled out. 
integrated bauxite and aluminium development industry will begin. Interoperability of payment systems will begin. Special prosecutor appointed and he has started working and will continue. Transparent accounting for our exported minerals will begin. One Village, One Down will be in full swing. Massive infrastructure program will go on. And by massive infrastructure, we mean there will be significant investments in roads, railways, interchanges, housing, and so on. Kukudu. Yes, Ladies and gentlemen, at this rate, it looks like by the time we get into third gear, we'll need a new manifesto to continue. Yeah. Yeah. Fellow patriots, President Ekofwada, the government of NPP, places significant premium on the contributions and expertise of the diaspora <coughs> towards national development. This reflects in the many hands that the president has invited from across the globe to help in his administration. Without boring you with a tall list of appointees coming from the diaspora, let me crave your indulgence to mention a few of the positions in government that have been given to diaspora and PP members in recognition of your hard work, skills, and expertise. We have Richard Dombo, CEO of Ghana Railway Development Authority. We have our own lawyer, Edward Ose, who is Director of Ports at Tema. We have Mr. Kwesi Buzia, who is CEO at DVLA. We have our own Mr. Joe Anochi here, who is NCA with CEO. And the list goes on and on and on. We have Freda somewhere. Do I see him here? Yes, that's right. Hot first. Lydia Atemo from Canada. She's also acting deputy CEO of Youth Employment Agency. In addition, government has set up the Diaspora Relations Office of the Presidency to serve as the link between the diaspora and government. This is a landmark achievement on the part of government of Ghana, which has formalized the engagement of the Ghanaian diaspora for effective migration management and national development planning. I would like to commend Akwesia Bebio and Nadia Musa for the wonderful job they're doing at the Diaspora Relations Office. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, I encourage you all to take advantage of these opportunities and many projects in the office to help bring and promote investment in Ghana. We have created an enabling environment for business and more is being done. In spite of the many good things happening, however, and the hard work of government, I know there are still challenges that need to be addressed, especially those that affect you directly. Please feel free to engage with your concerns and contributions. Government is ready to listen and rely, and would rely heavily on your feedback in order to perform creditably. Mr. Chairman, it goes without saying that we are in government and therefore we have a duty to manage Ghana and manage it well. At the same time, we should make time to nurture our great party. I charge all of us gathered here, therefore, to take keen interest in enhancing the focus and direction of the party. We must all be ready to effectively participate in the activities of the party while observing, observing the rules of engagement and making use of appropriate channels and seeking redress to grievances and challenges that may arise along the way. And I'd like to add that I'm, I'm really impressed by the turnout today. And thank you all for coming and making a show in spite of your heavy schedules. I appreciate the fact that so far you've organized yourself in a peaceful and cordial manner. Let us keep the momentum and stay focused on our core duties and responsibilities as party members by upholding the tenets of our constitution. Mr. Chairman, fellow Kukwaraites, I wish to conclude by thanking MPP USA for the strong relationship with the party at home and showing leadership in the diaspora. I hope that the coming years will offer us the opportunity to continue to draw synergies for development and advancement of MPP and Mother Ghana. On this note, I wish all the candidates and all the entire, the entire MPP USA fraternity a successful Congress. God bless MPP USA. God bless MPP and God bless MPP. for a wonderful speech delivered. We may take our seat. Thank you. Give it up onto her once more.